The night view of the city under Billy's feet was mesmerizing. Stunning even. Far different from its noisy, crowded, and polluted image during the day. How he wished the night could last longer. He looked on the eastern side of the city. There it was, the planetarium. He always wanted to go there, preferably with friends. But his oddity had always made people avoid him. They never bullied him, but they made sure to never engage with him. Hence, he never really had friends. Because of this, he was always alone. An outcast. Since he could never make friends, he decided to spend most of his time sleeping. Yes, sleep is now his best friend. While most people do not realize they are dreaming when asleep, Billy can distinguish his dreams from reality. In fact, he can even control what happens in his dreams. While still in the air, he imagined a boy the same as his age. He decided that this boy should be wearing a black shirt paired with jeans. He imagined him to be approachable, kind, and friendly. Yes, this boy will be his first friend. Eventually, his imagination came into life. Hello, John. Billy said. Hi Billy, answered the boy. Let's go there. Billy asked, pointing to the planetarium. Finally, he could go there with his friend. Finally, he thought even if it was just a dream. John nodded. They walked in the air towards the direction of the planetarium. A few seconds later, they landed at the entrance of a building. With a smile on his face, Billy pushed the door. Kring. Kring. The sudden alarm of his clock woke Billy in his sleep. Seriously. What are you still doing there? Wake up, or you'll be late for school his mother ranted. He looked into the wall clock. True enough, he only had 30 minutes before his class started. Though his bed was still pulling him to sleep more, he rushed to the bathroom, signaling the start of his typical, uneventful day. Billy was 10 minutes late when he arrived at his first subject, earning him detention in the afternoon. He never complained. More time to sleep, he just thought. Aside from the occasional conversation of his classmates in hushed voices, their pointed and judgmental looks whenever he accidentally met their eyes, nothing special happened during the day. When he entered the detention room, another boy was already sitting in front. This guy seems familiar, he thought. He sat beside him and unintentionally stared at him, a minute longer than he would have initially liked. What, he asked, annoyed. Sorry, Billy apologized, as he would never want to start a fight. He directed his gaze to the blackboard, ashamed of what he had just done. Clearly, he was never good in conversations. There is no point for me to try it now, he thought. A few moments had passed before he spoke again. I was just thinking where I saw you. You seem familiar to me, Billy explained. The guy took a deep breath before answering him. Surely, you have seen me. I was literally two seats behind you in physics. Billy had never really taken notice of his surroundings and the people around him. People avoided him. Sometimes, they were even hostile. If he gave them more attention than necessary, he would just be hurt. Rejected. I am Rick, by the way. Billy. They never spoke again as not long after, the silence lulled them into sleep. It was his first time riding a unicorn, not that anybody had ridden one before. It has a magnificent build and a sharp and pointed horn. Its white skin was almost luminescent. Suddenly, he heard someone screaming. Ho, 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 he said to the unicorn. He tried to follow where the sounds were coming from. He closed his eyes and started focusing. When he opened his eyes, he was not in his dream anymore. Still, he knew that he was still asleep. He saw Rick sleeping. He tried to touch him, but he was sucked into a dark hole. What's happening, he thought. Then he saw Rick running while carrying a sack of jewelry in his back. Chasing after him is Colonel Garcia, the bounty hunter's brigade commanding officer. I must be in Rick's dream, 
Billy thought. Go away. Rick shouted as he looked behind while he continued running. When Rick reached the crossroads, Billy grabbed him and pushed him behind a huge truck, preventing them from being caught by Rick's pursuer. What are you doing here? Rick asked. It is me who should ask you. Why did you rob the jewelry shop? Billy countered. It has always been my dream to rob a jewelry shop, Rick replied. Seriously? This is what he is dreaming of? Billy thought. To rob a jewelry store? Do you need my help? Billy offered. Maybe you can confuse Colonel Garcia. Just like in the movies? Okay. This may not be a movie, but anything is also possible in a dream. Not later than a minute, Billy approached the currently running Colonel Garcia. Colonel, he yelled while also running beside the Colonel, I saw the robber go to the forest. The officer nodded and went in the direction of the forest. When it was deemed safe, Rick went out of his hiding. Thanks, Rick said gratefully. You're welcome. Your detention is over, said a voice. Guess it's over, Billy said. Wake up now, Rick. Billy closed his eyes and started to focus. When he opened his eyes, he was again inside the detention room. Mr. Sevilla, his physics teacher, was in front of them. You can go home now, said Mr. Sevilla. He immediately left right after signing their detention slips. Meanwhile, Rick started stirring up. He opened his eyes, confusion reflected in them. He must still be half awake, Billy thought. When finally fully awake, he directed his gaze to Billy, wondering whether what just happened in his dreams were just that to dreams. On the other hand, Billy decided that letting others know his secret would further establish his image as someone strange. With these thoughts in mind, he played dumb and feigned confusion on Rick's behavior. Rick stared at him for a moment before holding out his hand. Billy, you cool to be friends? Did he just ask me to be his friend? Or maybe I am still in a dream. Very subtly, Billy pricked his left arm. Ouch. Billy asked Rick after Billy failed to respond. Uh, yes, I am cool with that. Billy shook Rick's hand reluctantly, unable to believe he just made a new friend. Later that evening, Billy was replaying the events in the detention room in his mind. He got a new friend, he thought. This time an actual and existing person and not just a dream. Another thing bothering him was what went on earlier inside his dream or, more accurately, Rick's dream. Billy knew he could control his dreams. Never had he thought that he could also enter the dreams of others. Was Billy really able to enter Rick's dreams? Or was it just part of his dreams? The following morning, Billy woke up ahead of the alarm. He was unusually enthusiastic about going to school, thus, surprising his mother. When he arrived at his physics class, Billy noticed that Rick's seat was empty. It was still early, he thought. Maybe he will come later. Rick never arrived in physics class though, or for any of his other subjects for that day. This made Billy a bit disappointed and anxious. For the first time, he was worried for someone other than himself. Do you not like the food? His mother asked during dinner after noticing that he barely touched his food. I like it. My stomach is just acting up. Billy replied. He then directed his gaze to the TV, pretending to watch the news as he no longer wanted to explain further. The Nightmare King's strike again, announced the male broadcaster on the TV. This time, a 15-year-old boy was attacked in his sleep yesterday. His parents reported that their son failed to wake up this morning after retiring last night. Currently, the boy is in a coma and is not showing improvement. Suddenly, Billy dropped the spoon he was holding. His eyes fixed on the TV screen showing the picture of his friend, Rick. Are you okay, Billy, asked his mother. I'm fine, answered Billy. Mom. I would like to sleep early. Thanks for dinner, said Billy, already rushing to his room. Midway through, he stopped in his tracks and faced his mother. 
Mom, is it okay, if I am afraid? His mother looked at him, wondering what had gotten into her son. It's all right, dear, his mother answered. When we are afraid, it means that we care, that we value something or someone. If we were fearless, we might act recklessly. We might do actions that hurt ourselves or other people. So, Billy, it's okay to be afraid, especially when doing something important. Just don't let it beat you from doing something right. Did I answer your question? His mother asked after Billy failed to respond. Yes, Mom. Thanks, answered Billy as he entered his room. Unlike his usual nights, Billy did not immediately sleep. Thoughts of Rick's kidnapping kept running in his head. Can I really enter people's dreams? If I can enter Rick's dreams, can I really do something to help him? Can I still save him? He closed his eyes and tried to focus on Rick, to fall asleep, but his drumming heart would not let him. What if I failed? Will I also be like them? No soul and in a state of coma? These thoughts kept bugging his mind. Finally, he gave up and opened his eyes. I am afraid, he realized. He took a deep breath and tried to remember his mother's words earlier. Absence of fear makes one reckless. The presence of fear makes us more careful. So, it's okay to be afraid. I am afraid, but I won't let fear beat me, Billy thought. Again, Billy tried to focus. His thoughts of Rick filled his mind, this time, with a calm heart. Not half an hour later, Billy was able to sleep. When Billy opened his eyes, he was in the middle of the forest. Before him was a cave, its entrance guarded by two men. Not far from it, he could see a lake. This must be the Nightmare King's lair, Billy thought. Rick's soul must be inside. Billy contemplated on how he could get inside. Since this was a dream, he hoped and prayed fervently that his abilities also worked here. He imagined himself being invisible. Not confident that he succeeded in becoming invisible, he imagined a mirror in his hand. A few seconds later, he was holding a round mirror. He looked at it and confirmed that he could not be seen. Next, he created a ball of fire in his hands and threw it towards the nearby trees. Fire! Fire! shouted the two guards while running towards the lake. Holding his breath, he ran silently towards the cave. He saw numerous men rushing outside. The fire must be spreading rapidly, he thought. As he walked inside, he saw two tunnels suddenly, he heard some people sobbing in one of the tunnels. He concentrated where the cries were coming from. It's from the left. He ran, the cries becoming louder. He saw a door leading to a room. He looked in either of his sides and concluded that no one was there aside from him. He opened the door creating a loud creak. He stepped inside and closed the door. Who's there? His steps halted. The man in front of him was scowling and had a stance of a wild beast ready to attack. He was bulky, almost seven feet in height. In Billy's mind, he would certainly be beaten and dead if this man actually attacked him. He looked at the man. Despite his threatening gesture, the man's eyes were not focused on him. He could not see me. Billy almost forgot that he was invisible. He could use it to his advantage. He created three big wolves and ordered them to attack the man. The man tried to resist but was overpowered by his wolves. Sensing that he could not defeat real beasts by himself, the man ran outside the room. He ordered the wolves to follow the man. For the first time, he took notice of the shelves inside the room. He thought that this place was a library. Then, he saw that instead of books, there were glass bottles. What are these, he thought. He grabbed one bottle when suddenly he heard a voice. Help. Help. He almost dropped the bottle. The voices must be from inside of these bottles. These must be the souls kidnapped by Nightmare Kings. Billy declared. There were several bottles. Which one is Rick? 
Should I just grab as many as I can? Rick? Rick? Where are you? It is me, Billy. I am here. Please help me. Keep talking Rick. Rick talked incessantly. Billy tried to follow his voice until he reached the last shelf. He grabbed the last bottle and carefully placed it in his pocket. He thought of taking other bottles but was stopped by loud steps of men entering the room. A group of men not less than 20 was inside. If he took another bottle, these men would definitely notice. We know you are here. Show yourself, one of the men said. Careful not to take any more risks, Billy decided to leave the cave. Please take us with you. Please. Please, said the voices as he was leaving. He stopped in his tracks and looked back. I promise I will come back for you. I will save you. Just wait for a little more time. He told them using telepathy. He hoped that these messages actually reached them. Careful not to make any noise, he slipped through the door and traced back his steps to the cave's entrance. Why do the Nightmare Kings need souls? Could I really save them? These thoughts were playing in his mind as he made his escape. He remembered the souls he left behind and made an oath to himself. They need someone to help them. He will be the person who will save them. Despite his oath, he was afraid. He pushed these negative thoughts away and decided to remember his mother's words. Absence of fear makes one reckless. The presence of fear makes us more careful. So, it's okay to be afraid. Just don't let it beat you from doing right. He will definitely beat his fear. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this story, like and subscribe for more. See you soon.